This is Seed of Word in ministry. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Hallelujah. God is good and worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Fear factor. Amen. This is Seed of Word and Ministry, and I am a meta. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Father, we thank you today that you we know that you are our shepherd. Amen. And that you make us lie down in green pastures. You protect us and we give you praise. We honor you today. Hallelujah. For you have given us another day to rejoice in the grace and mercy that you have presented to us. God, we thank you that you've been faithful and just and full of mercy for us. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Often in our lives, uh, there are times when we are faced with trials, amen, fearful situations. I used to watch a TV program with the title Fear Factor. The contestants would have uh, bees or snakes poured in on them while being in a cage themselves. Or they would encourage them to eat some of the most detestable things like 90-year-old boiled eggs or drinking the blood of some dead animals. The object was to attack your fear. And of course, they won money for completing the task. Amen. Fear factor. The Bible teaches us that perfect love casts out fear, all fear. Also that God has not given us a spirit of fear. I am sure it is the love of money that kept those people focused. The big question for us is how do we rejoice in the midst of a storm, a trial? In my book club this week, we are reading a book with about 70 people from all over the world. The book is titled The Cross of Christ. In this section, we are reading a part of a paragraph addressed to the salvation of, of a sinner. Something jumped out at me in this section and I hollered, hallelujah. The section covered the business of God's propitiation. We did not play a part in it, except 
uh, the concept of the word and released of our sins. We cannot work for this special gift. We just have to believe that David prompted us to believe that he believed. In Psalms 56, 34, it states, When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. He goes on to say, I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? I am much like David and have some situations where fear came upon me and sometimes overwhelmed me. I remember a year and a half, a year and a half ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. It seemed that I became numb and didn't feel much. But when the test and the pot biopsies came to part, oh, it registered, woman, you have cancer. Not just in one place, but two places. And those organs were going to be removed in less than two weeks. Fear and its factor. My doctors were not playing around. As I sat in the waiting room of the MRI, MRI uh, portion of the hospital, I was praying and God gave me a task to do. While I was sitting there, I was reminded of the miracles that God can do and had done. I could say out loud, I trust you. I didn't think much of the surgery until the day of the surgery. Amen. As I was undressing and getting ready for the surgery, I was shaking. I was cold, but I had a fear also upon me. And I remembered and reminded myself that I had a task before me. And it seemed like that took over everything that I was feeling. I was to pray for the doctors involved with my case. Still shaking on the upper room, room table, just as they were in the process of placing the mask on my face, I said, I asked, could I pray for you all? Oh. And they said, yes. I remember saying in Jesus' name, and I don't remember anything else until I woke up in the recovery room. And I said to myself, I did it. I, like David, had trusted God. I had come to know for the last 42 years that no matter what kind of fear I was faced with or situation, amen, God was going to be there. And no matter what kind of situation you find yourself in, health, maybe an overdue bill, a husband and wife walking out on you, I want to tell you, God will not leave you nor forsake you. So grab a word and hold on. Trials are going to come. He that meditates on the word of God shall be like a tree planted by the river of water who will bring forth fruit in due season. And your leaves will not wither and whatsoever you put your hands to do will prosper. These are troubling times shooting everywhere, murders, people losing their loved ones. Fear is raging in the hearts of those who are doing it, as well as the hearts of those that have been attacked and their families. Hallelujah. But David said, I will trust in him. Do you know him today for yourself? If not, let me share who he is from the love letter he left us in the Bible. He is Jehovah, Jireh, the provider God. Abraham was asked by God to offer his son as a sacrifice. Abraham had everything he needed to make the sacrifice as he walked towards the place where God was leading him. He trusted that God would be is the God he knew, amen. And as he placed his son on the altar 
And you know the story. God said, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay your hands on the child. And then Abraham heard the baying of a lamb. Amen. He is, I am, what you need him to be, he told Pharaoh. He told Moses, amen, to tell Pharaoh. He is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is near. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. His banner is love over us. He is El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. He can become whatever you need, amen, him to be. He is Jehovah Taniskanu. He is your righteousness, not having your own, but having his righteousness. He is Yahweh HaMasiach. Jesus is the Messiah. He is Emmanuel. He will always be with you. He is omniscient. He is everywhere at all times. He's more than all of that. He is like a bag of chips, they say. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Uh, my brothers and sisters, he loves and cares for you. No matter what your situation is, that he finds you in. His name is wonderful and his promises are outstanding. His promises to give you strength, to give you rest, to take care of you, to answer prayers, to forgive you of your confessed sins, to work things out for your good, to protect you from things and free you. He is bold towards you. He's promised to free you from the fear of death. There are 7,487 promises of God in the Bible. God has for you and me so that fear is not a factor. It is false evidence of what appears to be real. Amen. Let me tell you a little more about this God who is waiting for you with open arms. He sent his son who became our justification. He not only cleared our debts, he abolished them. Amen. Glory to God. He is our reconciler. He restored us back to the Father. He is our Savior. He saved us from the wrath of God. He became our propitiation. He took the fall for us. When we understand who he is and that he loves us, we will be able to rejoice in the trial because trials come to make us strong. Amen. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor principalities, nor other creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Accept Jesus, accept Jesus, and receive the mighty plan God has for you and me, so that you can rejoice in trial and celebrate on the other side. Let me combine fear and factor into one definition. It is an unpleasant emotion caused by a belief of a cer certain circumstance that has influence on you in a negative outcome. Look at David. He got through the trials. He used what we find in King James Psalm 77 and 11. I will remember your great deeds, Lord. I will recall what wonders you did in the past. I will think about all that you have done. I will meditate on your mighty acts. Look how it reads in the Good News Bible. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. I will meditate also on all thy work 
and talk of thy doings. You see, you can change the factor. Amen. Put on the mind of Christ. The Amplified Bible says in Psalm 77, I will earnestly recall the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will earnestly remember the wonders you performed for our fathers of old. I will meditate also upon all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Amen. How do you rejoice in the trial, in the test? Grab a word and hang on. Amen. There is light at the end of the tunnel. You can pretend that you are going through a tunnel and see the end of that tunnel. Amen. Because God is good. His promises are true, and he gave them to me and you. Amen. Can I go through a trial or a test with a smile? Uh-huh. As I think of what he's done in the old, what he did for me, what he brought me through, how he saved me, amen. The song says, when I look back over my life, and I think of all the things that he has done for me, I can see how your love has guided me. God's love has guided me, and God's love has guided you. Think on the good things when trials come. They are awesome when they come. <laughs> they often make us overwhelmed. But if we think on the goodness of God and what he has done for us, we can rejoice. Amen. We might even have to start looking at other people, how God has blessed other people and rejoice in the things that they have, they have received. Hallelujah. Because God is no respecter of person. What he's done for one person, he will do for another. Amen. Amen. Trouble may come my way, but God is already there. <laughs> An omniscient, omnipresent God is already there. The Holy Spirit is there to help you to remember what God has done and the things that he has said. Can you believe that with me today? If not, check out what I just said and look it up in the scriptures. I, I, I especially like Psalm 77, 11. <laughs> Easy to remember, Psalms 77 and 11. I will earnestly recall the deeds of the Lord. Amen. Earnestly do it. You have to push to do it. Amen. It might be a struggle, but it sure will be easy once you do it. Once we practice putting the good things on top of the negative, it becomes easier. Amen. Because God is good all the time. He loves you, and so do I. Stay safe. Stay distancing. Keep the gloves on when necessary. Wear the mask when necessary. And ask God about taking the test. COVID is still out there, and we must protect ourselves as much as we can. Pray, because oh, God hears prayer. Pray according to his word, and watch God do miracles. Amen. Miracles. Stay safe. Lord willing, see you on Thursday. Sometimes. I got to cry sometimes.